In this video, we work through an exam question involving a circular sector as well as a cone. And the whole idea behind this question is that we need to figure out how to find the height of a cone given the circular sector it was made from. And if you haven't seen this question before or any question like it, my advice would be to go ahead and press pause and try solving it. Once that's done, go ahead and press play and see how to solve this. Now, this exercise reads as follows. The circle with center O has radius 10 centimeters. Angle AOB is equal to 50 degrees. So that's the angle that I'm hovering over right now. And we're told that the minor sector AOB is removed. And we're told the major sector is formed into a cone by joining OA to OB. So just to be clear here, we're starting off with a circle whose center is O. We then come along and cut out the minor sector AOB, which I'm hovering over right now, which leaves us with the major sector that I'm hovering over. And it's with this major sector that we create the cone that we see here. And that's done by joining OA to OB. So hopefully you can picture actually doing that, perhaps with a sheet of paper. If you were to cut out a circle and then cut out this minor sector, then joining OA to OB, would lead to a cone looking like this one. Finally, we need to calculate the height of the cone. Now, as I often do, I'll start by writing S O L here for solution. Okay, now looking at all of this, the first thing I'd like to point out here is that as far as the cone is concerned, we're given absolutely no information whatsoever. Indeed, looking at this cone, granted, we're looking for the height, but we're not given the slanted height, also known as sloping edge, nor are we given its radius at the base. So in summary, looking at this cone as it is, there's nothing we can use to figure out the height. On the other hand, when it comes to the major sector we have here, well, we have all the information we could possibly be given. Indeed, we have the radius, that's 10 centimeters, and we have the angle at the top of the minor sector that was cut out from the original circle. And it's already worth making a note of the fact that as the sum of the angles at the center of the circle must add up to 360 degrees, this angle at the center must equal to 310 degrees. So the angle we're dealing with for this major sector is 310 degrees. Okay, now remember, we need to find this cone's height. And the formula that come to mind when thinking of a cone's height, well, I can think of two right now. The first one being the volume of a cone, for which the volume is equal to one third of pi r squared times h, where the radius here is the radius at the base of the cone. And in fact, throughout this video, because we'll be dealing with the radius of the circular sector as well as the radius of the cone, I'll be writing r sub c at the bottom here, just to specify that that's for the cone. And this formula for the volume of a cone definitely involves its height, which is promising since that's what we're after. It also involves the radius at the base of the cone, which remember, for the moment at least, we don't know. And lastly, of course, it involves the cone's volume, which we're not given. So, although this involves the cone's height, this also leads to another unknown, that is, the volume. So let's see if there's something else involving the height which we may be able to use in order to find it. And the next thing that comes to my mind is the cone's slant height or sloping edge. That is this slanted length that I'm drawing over right now, this length here, which we'll typically call lowercase l. Now the slant height, l, is equal to the square root of the height of the cone squared, plus its radius at the base squared. And remember, all of that's under a square root. And I should also say r sub c, remember that's the radius of the cone at its base. Now looking at this formula, this also involves the height that we need to find, it also involves the radius at the base of the cone, and it involves the slant height, or sloping edge. And going back to how this cone was made, and in fact even looking at the illustration we have here, in particular this line going from OA and OB, we quickly realize that the slant height must equal to the radius of our circular sector. Remember, this cone is formed by joining OA to OB. Consequently, this slant height has to equal to this 10 centimeter radius on our circular sector. And so for this formula, we could actually go ahead and replace the L that we have on the left-hand side by 10. 
which leads to the following. 10 is equal to the square root of h squared plus the radius of the cone squared. And all that's, of course, under a square root. Now, this is looking quite promising. Indeed, provided we can find the radius of the cone at its base, we'll be able to rearrange this expression in order to figure out what the height h is. But now, before I carry on to figure out what the radius at the base is, let me just stop for a minute just to clarify where this formula for the slant height is coming from. And I'm doing this because, in my experience, this formula often causes a bit of trouble. So like I said, let me just spend one minute on it before carrying on. Let's say I have a cone like the one we're working with, so something looking like this. There we go. And just as we have here, this is a right cone, so I've got its center at the base right here, and the radius at the base would be here. Now the slant height, or sloping edge that I've been referring to, would correspond to the length of the line segment I'm drawing right now. There we go. And hopefully you can see that because this is a right cone, the radius that I've drawn at the base here forms a right angle with the height of the cone. In other words, there's a right angle right here. And so let me label this a bit. That's the height h. We have the slant height l. And last but not least, we have the radius at the base of the cone, which I've been calling r sub c. Now that's the 3D visual of it all, but let me just focus on this right angle triangle for a second. And so for that, I'll draw a right angle triangle underneath it. That's the height h. We have the radius r, so that's r sub c, and we have the slant height, which is l. There we go. And of course, we have our right angle here. Now looking at this right angle triangle, since the slant height is opposite the right angle, it's the hypotenuse. We can therefore state, according to Pythagoras' theorem, that L squared is equal to the height squared, or h squared, plus the radius at the base squared. Finally, applying the square root to both sides of this formula leads us to L is equal to the square root of h squared plus the radius squared. And that's where this slant height formula is coming from. There we go. I'll just separate this from the rest of the exercise, like so. And hopefully, even if you knew that result before, you saw that as a healthy reminder. And I'll just connect that to the formula here. There we go. Okay, back to our problem. Remember, using the formula for the slant height, alongside the fact that this cone's slant height had to be equal to this circular sector's radius, We've established that 10 has to be equal to the square root of h squared plus the radius of the cone at the base squared. And so what's the radius of the cone at its base? And I'll go ahead and draw that on the cone. What's this radius right here? Well, first of all, let me clearly say the radius at this cone's base is not equal to 10 centimeters. Indeed, just think of how you would construct this cone by joining OA to OB and hopefully you'll realize that the radius at the base here has to be less than 10 centimeters. So, what is it? Well, although we can't find the answer directly, one thing we do notice here is that the circumference or perimeter of the circle at this cone's base is made from the arc length A, B. Indeed, since OA and OB are brought together to form this cone, the points A and B are now matching. In other words, the circumference I'm sort of drawing around right now in black, there we go, must equal to the circular sector's arc length that I'm drawing around in black as well here. There we go. Now the arc length of a circular sector, which I'll go ahead and call capital L here, is given by a formula. And that formula is capital L for arc length equals to theta divided by 360 times 2 pi r, where theta is the angle that's formed by the arc, so in this case that's the 310 degrees we found earlier on, and r is the radius of the circular arc, so in this case that would be 10 centimeters. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that formula as well. There we go. Now just as we said, this arc length must equal to the circumference or perimeter of the circle at the base of the cone and the circumference of a circle, which I'll go ahead and call capital C, well, that's equal to 2 pi r, where the r in this case 
is the radius of the circle at the base of the cone, so I'll say r sub c. Okay, so the right-hand sides of both of these results must be equal. And luckily for us, for the arc length here, we know theta and we know r. So this arc length turns into the arc length is equal to theta, which is 310, over 360, times 2 pi, times the radius, which is 10. And so we have this entire product, which has to equal to this product. And so writing all of that out, we'll have 2 pi times r sub c, which equals to 310 over 360, times 2 pi, times 10. Okay, well, one thing I notice when looking at both sides of this equation is that they both contain the factor 2 pi. And so we can cross out that common factor right away. We're now left with r sub c, that's the radius we need, is equal to 310 over 360, which I can simplify quickly to 31 over 36, times 10. Finally, multiplying 31 by 10, we can state that the radius of the circle at the base of the cone is equal to 310 over 36. And that's all we were missing now in the formula we have here involving the height of the cone. And in fact, I probably should have boxed that result as well. There we go. Now combining those two results and carrying on with the working right here, we can state that 10 is equal to the square root, so I'll write a big square root here, there we go, of h squared plus the radius at the base of the cone, so that's the radius we just found, squared. And so I write in parentheses 310 over 36 squared. Now to find what h is, I need to get it out of this square root, and to do that, I square both sides of this equation. In doing so, the left-hand side turns into 10 squared, which is 100, and that's equal to this square root squared, which results in just getting rid of the square root. So that becomes h squared plus, in parentheses, 310 over 36 squared. Next, remember that I need to find h, and so for that, I'll get rid of this 310 over 36 squared, which is being added on the right-hand side which I do by subtracting this term from both sides of the equation. So that's 100 minus, in parentheses, 310 over 36 squared equals to h squared. And now copying this in the opposite order, I can go ahead and state that h squared is equal to 100 minus, in parentheses, 310 over 36 squared. Finally, applying the square root to both sides of this equation, we can state that h is equal to the square root of 100 minus, in parentheses, 310 over 36 squared. And as such, we're done. All we need to do now is enter all of this in our calculator and calculate. So, let's go ahead. You can see my calculator on the screen now, this is my TI Inspire CX, but regardless of the calculator, the method here will be the same. And so I need to enter this entire expression under the square root here. So let's see, I type my square root, there we go, and so we have 100 minus, in parentheses, 310 divided by 36, I exit that pair of parentheses and I raise it to the power of 2. I now exit this entire thing, like so, I check everything I've typed, and everything seems fine to me, so I click on enter. And we're done! Copying the result we see on our calculator and rounding it to three significant figures, we can go ahead and state that the height of the cone is h equals to 5.08 centimeters. And that's the final answer. And we're done. We've just found the height of this cone given the circular sector it was made from. Notice that we didn't need the formula for the volume of a cone, but it was still a valid part of our reasoning, indeed. We proceeded by elimination to see what we could use, and all we really ended up using was the slant height or sloping edge of the cone alongside the fact that it had to equal to the radius of the circular sector the cone was made from, 
and we used the fact that the circumference of the circle at the base of the cone had to equal to the circular sector's arc length. So slant height, radius, and circumference, arc length. All that being said, that's it for this tutorial.